it is time to finally tackle the studio room ceiling. Our ceiling is literally going to be filled with sand. How mad is that? Hiya folks and welcome back to the show and we are finally up to the exciting bit in this kind of building a soundproof studio room project which I appreciate is lasting quite a long time but we did have other priorities and kind of a house to build first but we are back on it with this and we are up to the stage where we need to soundproof the ceiling. It is probably the most difficult and most critical part of the whole build because if there's going to be a weak point in this structure it is going to be the ceiling. Just to give you a little bit of background on this project, we built the initial structure from concrete blocks, uh, a double skin with cavity, so it's a 300mm wall, 100mm concrete block, 100mm cavity which is insulated, and then 100mm concrete block. We also have a concrete floor slab in, and we have the roof structure made from doubled up 150mm joists and the reason for that is because this is going to be taking a substantial load with the weight of the ceiling that's going to go below it. We are somewhat limited on height due to permitted development so unfortunately we couldn't go for a warm roof. It's a cold roof design which means that we're going to have 50 mil for airflow all the way from the front of the studio to the back and then we're going to have 100 mil of acoustic insulation we're going to have the ceiling suspended down on genie clips. We're then going to make use of what's known as SBX boards. They're effectively boards that are filled with sand. I'll talk about those more a little bit later on. We're then going to have 15mm sound block boards and then it'll be fully skimmed. So the overall thickness of the ceiling should be about 30mm or thereabouts so that it doesn't reduce the headroom in the room too much. I've talked about it before on this project. I'm not an acoustics expert but my background is in audio engineering and recording so I do have a little bit of background in acoustics and I've worked with acoustic consultants over the years. So I've got a good general idea of what needs to be done to try and reduce sound getting out and reduce sound getting in. Oh and by the way the whole purpose of this building is that it's going to be an editing suite for recording, for things like recording podcasts, voiceovers. It's also going to be a place where I can record my drums as well because I play the drums. Before we do anything I want to check how well this acoustic treatment is going to perform so we're going to do a couple of before and after tests. <laughs> So the crux of it is you can very clearly still hear the drum from outside the studio room. So fingers crossed that'll be all resolved by the time we get to the end of this video. Also in order to save your sanity this version of the video is massively cut down. But if you are tackling a project like this and you want a little bit more information and a few tips on how to use some of the products that I'm talking about head over to the members zone members.gosforthhandyman.com and the full extended version of this video is over there. No adverts, it'll cost you a few quid but it'll hopefully save you a fortune if you are going to be doing this job yourself. The nice thing about the member zone is that I can make videos as long as I want without having any kind of problems and without YouTube constantly bashing me over the head telling me I should make shorts. A big thank you to Soundstop who, as you'll be aware, I've worked with Soundstop before on previous videos and they have been a fantastic company to deal with. They've provided a lot of the gear that I'm going to be using for free, so massive thank you to them. If you're looking to undertake a project like this, Soundstop have some really good kind of calculators on their website. You basically go on and plug the numbers in for the size of your room and it will just spit out all the gear that you're going to need and they will helpfully sell all that gear to you. Before I start anything I'm going to have to get all these lights down, sort out some of the electrics and I need to tidy up around the window a little bit and I need to block the holes above the wall plate as well. So I'm going to get some of that remedial work done off camera, get all tidied up and then we're ready to install the genie clips. 
Right, we are motoring. I've got all of the rafters bolted together. Most of the gaps in the wall plates are filled with the exception of one that I can't get to until we get this big pile of insulation out the road. Now, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, and you'll probably be aware of this if you've been following this project over quite a long period of time, but we had some quite significant builder problems when we first got this space built. I did give them plans of what we wanted and essentially everything that was on the plans was more or less ignored. They put the window in the wrong place, they put the door in the wrong place, they built it too high. And I only discovered when I was building the roof how massively out of square this structure is as well. And that presented all sorts of problems for building the roof in such a way that it doesn't look ridiculous from the outside. But this problem is also rearing its ugly head inside as well, because that wall is five centimeters longer than that wall, and that wall is five centimeters longer than that wall. So I strongly suggest that before you attach any genie clips into the ceiling, you come up with a plan of exactly how your boards are going to be laid out. Now, Soundstop do provide a very helpful installation guide for the Genie Clips. So this is the LB3 system that we're using, by the way, and you can kind of get an idea of what's going to be going on here. But this kind of explains what you need to do. The crux of it is, is that you can have the clips up to a metre apart on each bar and then each bar should be no more than 600 mil from the next bar, if that makes sense. So we should be all good there. So do have a read through their own instructions because it does explain everything. So I've then marked on the wall plate where each board join needs to go to allow for the genie clips and fairing bars. And then the only other thing we need to worry about now is that the gap between each fairing bar, let me just show you what I mean by that because until I've actually fitted them, it'll be a bit confusing. So if you imagine these are going to run uh, on there like that. So there'll be one there, one there, and the gap between these bars can't be any more than 600 mil. So here we've got oh, about 530, so that's fine. Again, 470, that's fine. But then as we work our way round, we've got one on this side and one on that side. So we're going to have a bit of a stretch there you see that's 660 so i think what we'll do is we'll put an extra run on this one so there's going to be a fairing bar there and a fairing bar there that'll solve that problem we've then got about 500 those two are close and then finally we need to work out how far down the fairing bar needs to come so that the bottom of the fairing bar, so this bit here, is just below ceiling level or just below rafter level. The key thing here is that we don't want our new ceiling to be touching these rafters. That's the whole point of the genie clips. So what I'll do, I'll just make a little 35 millimeter block and I'll use that as a kind of template spacer to get all of them in exactly the same place. So before you fit all of your genie clips, I strongly recommend that you just do a test fit with probably four brackets will do the job. Run a couple of offcuts of fairing bar onto it and just double check your spacing from the bottom of the fairing bars to your rafters, just to double check that at no point your ceiling is gonna end up touching the rafters because if the ceiling touches the rafters, you're defeating the whole objective of what we're doing here. You might as well just screw your plasterboard straight to the rafters. The whole purpose of what we're doing here, remember, is to isolate the new ceiling from your existing rafters or floor joists or whatever they happen to be. To me, that looks absolutely perfect. So I've got a lot of genie clips to fit now. I'm gonna get that done and get all the fairing bars in and I'll come back to you very shortly. So then the next thing that we need to work out is that we've got the spacing between this row of genie clips here and this row 
have to be exactly correct because if they're not then when we go to install our full boards along here then we could end up in a situation where they don't hit a fairing bar 800 over that so that needs to come over about a centimeter they're easy enough to move um, but once you get all the fairing bars on they'll not be easy to move so it's best doing this uh, before you put the fairing bars on so just to show you what I mean these are our full boards here so it's this spacing between these two fairing bars and the spacing between these two fairing bars that needs to be exactly 800 millimeters So that's the first batch of fairing bars all installed. It's not fun cutting them by the way, that is a special blade I've got in my chop saw. Be very careful because the shards of metal can easily go in your eyes. And then when it comes to the overlap, I've got about, uh, let's have a look. I've got a 220 mil overlap there and I've just held them together with a couple of little pan head screws. Next job is the insulation. And the insulation is probably the least fun part of the whole project. I'm not going to film it because I know what it's like and trying to operate a camera while you've got bits of insulation falling on your face and you've got gloves on and all that sort of thing is nigh on impossible. So I'm going to get all of the insulation installed in the ceiling and then I'll come back to you. As suspected, that wasn't fun, but we're done with the insulation. Most unpleasant part of the whole job, but it is kind of critical. Now the next part of this would normally be putting some sort of vapour barrier up but as per everything with projects like this there are compromises and believe me this project is full of compromises for a start and let me just let you in on a little secret there's no such thing as soundproofing it's just the thing that you've probably searched for to find this video but soundproofing is all about kind of degrees of how far you want to push something unless you're going to have like a two foot thick concrete roof this isn't going to be a soundproof structure. So let's just set some expectations right there. I think the amount of vapor is going to be negligible. But on the other hand, because of the usual permitted development problems, we are going to run into problems with things like insulation. We do have this 100 mil of acoustic insulation, but that is essentially it. So as a bit of a compromise, I've decided instead of vapor barrier, I'm going to use this thermal wrap stuff. This will essentially act as a vapor barrier and it'll provide a bit of extra insulation as well. And I'm going to put this in between the layer of plasterboard and the SPX board. So that means it's time to break out the plasterboard lifter. I did buy one specifically for this job and we can flog it when we're finished because lifting these big 15 mil boards is going to be tricky and it's going to make life a lot easier for the SPX boards as well, hopefully. I'm going to use these little self-drilling plasterboard screws that are designed for metal partitions, so I'm assuming they'll do the job. And I'm also going to use these wafer washers as well. I've got a couple of different ones that I'm going to try. It doesn't tell you to use those, but it just seems like a good idea. At the end of the day, these boards are really heavy and they're essentially made of paper, so we'll see how we get on. Right, what I've learned so far, this would be nigh on impossible without a plasterboard lifter for a start. Those boards, they're so heavy and they feel like they're gonna snap when you're gonna pick them up anyway. I'm gonna plod on, just get a few more panels up and just see how we do. That's uh, two down.
covered in sand again. Now, I don't think I can make a video about doing this ceiling without talking a little bit about this SPX board. This stuff is amazing. It's an absolute game changer in my view. It says Phone Star on it and um, it says Wolf, uh, Wolf of Bavaria, but Soundstop call it SPX board, so that's what I'm calling it. But it's essentially corrugated paper filled with a very, very fine uh, kind of sand material. It's very, very, it's honestly, if you get a hole in it, it just pours out. So you've got to be a little bit careful. If you're used to working with plasterboard, it's similar, but then there's a few really, really key differences as well. So obviously, once you've done the cuts, just make sure you tape everything up. You get the roll of tape with it, or make sure you've got the roll of uh, the special tape that comes with it. But don't force it, don't tear the board, there we go. So we're through there, but you can see on this bit that I've cut off here, watch this, if I turn this upside down, literally all the sand from that board will just pour out. So that's, that bit of board is now essentially just corrugated cardboard. So as soon as you've done that cut, lift it upwards from that edge, and then just give it a bit of a brush off so that the board, the sand comes off quite easily. And then get your tape, line it up. And then all I do is fold down the two edges and just wrap them in like you're wrapping a Christmas present. There we go, another board ready to go. So that's the SPX board all installed on the ceiling. No problems really. It's all sealed around every edge and in between every board with acoustic sealant. The next job now is to do the vapor barrier and the very thin insulation layer that we're gonna put over this. I'm not sure you me installing that. I'll come back to you once it's done because it's a little bit out of scope for a soundproofing video, whether or not you actually need to do that. One thing I did want to show you though, our Rogue Builders strikes again and just look at how out of true this wall is. I mean, well, they're not following a string line. It's just unbelievable. So we've got this straight piece of wood touching the wall on that side, touching the wall on that side. I can literally, I can get my finger fully down here. We've got about a 15 millimeter gap there. Absolutely shocking. And that's not the worst of it. So I don't know if you can see, but I've set up the laser just on the edge of the plasterboard lifter there. So basically the laser line is just kissing the underside of the lintel. And let's have a look at this. So over here, we have got, well, we're about five millimeters off on this side, on the right-hand side, but have a look at where that line goes on the left-hand side. So this is a perfectly level laser line, obviously, and we are, oh, it's only 16 mil out. So pretty much three quarters of an inch out. That is absolutely shocking. So I'm gonna be framing all around this and leveling it all up with the framing so you'll not really see it. And once the wall's all dot and damped, that'll disguise the unevenness of the actual walls. But I'm sick to the back teeth of people saying, oh, you should have got professionals in to do it. Well, this is what happened when we got professionals in to do it. So uh, yeah, nice work. Right, another half day gone, and that is the vapor barrier stroke extra insulation done. It's basically foil bubble wrap. Taped around all of the edges and taped all the seams, taped any little holes and things like that. So I reckon this is a pretty good vapor barrier. I couldn't honestly tell you the specs of it, but the amount of vapor that's gonna get through this is gonna be so nominal. Um, that is not really gonna be a problem in this build. Obviously at this stage, now that we're ready to do the final layer of plasterboard, absolutely key that we've got all of our joists marked make sure you haven't covered up any of your markings with tape these 15 mil db boards are very very heavy so i'm going to need some help with this to get them loaded onto the plasterboard lifter anyway i'm going to get a start on that and i'll come back to you once that whole project's done
So that's two boards in. I've got another two to do here and then two half boards at the end. I'll come back to you once they're all in. So a little while later and that is us all done. Let me give you a quick guided tour of a few of the details around what we've done, a few of the remaining jobs that we've got to do and of course we'll do the before and after test with our white noise generator and the snare drum as well. So I've foamed around all of the edges of the room so you'll see at the top of the wood there because the wood didn't go all the way to the ceiling. I've also made a start on framing out the window as well. I'm going to make a separate video about that because that is kind of a, a topic in its own right. The plasters are now all booked in. We've got three walls to dot and dab and skim and we've got the ceiling to skim as well. And the only other thing that I haven't made a start on yet is the door. So there's a secondary internal door. So that's going to be our main point of sound getting to the outside world at the minute. But don't panic. As soon as we get that secondary internal door, that'll really be the room as soundproof as it can possibly get. So as I say, I've got my white noise generator hooked up and I've got the snare drum ready there. Let's do a quick test to see what difference this has made. <laughs> Okay, I'm not sure if you can hear the difference there, but from my perspective, being in the room and outside the room, the results are staggering. I'm really, really impressed. Now, bear in mind that we still obviously have the window to treat and the door to treat. The big thing with the window that I want you to bear in mind is that effectively around this edge, the only thing between us and the outside world is what? 10 millimeters of foam around that edge. I've still got all of that to treat, as I say, video coming soon. But I think as a little sideline experiment, just to show you how well this is already performing before the room's even finished, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of music on. I'm gonna put it on full volume on my little Charge 5 speakers. If you've never used the Charge 5 speakers, I'll include a link in the description. They are brilliant little portable Bluetooth speakers. I'm gonna turn them up full, and for such small speakers, these do kick out some serious volume. So just to show you, we are on full volume here. This is gonna get quite loud. So that's still playing. I'm standing about five meters away from the side of the building. About five meters away from the front of the building. And about five meters away from the acoustic glass window. Just to prove that is still playing. <laughs> And just as a little experiment to show how the sound is leaking out through that window at the moment, let me just show you. So yeah, hopefully you get the general idea. It is the window and door 
to blame for any other sound getting out of this building now, really, or any other meaningful levels of sound getting out of here. Do hit subscribe and I'll show you what the final result looks like. We've got the plasters coming in soon to do all the skim and the dot and dab. I'll be finishing off all around the window. And as I say, I've got the most important bit probably is the secondary internal door as well. But on the whole for the ceiling, I am really, really pleased with that. I think it's as good as we can possibly get it. Bear in mind our restrictions that we've got with permitted development and the overall height of the building. Once again, a massive thank you to Soundstop for all their help on this project. Do go and give them a visit at soundstop.co.uk. Remember, there's an extended version of this video if you're thinking of tackling a project like this over on the member zone where I go into things in much, much more detail. Members.gosforthandyman.com and also hit subscribe and you'll be able to see the follow-up video on the window treatment along with, of course, the final reveal of the complete room. And hopefully, fingers crossed, all of the hard work that we've done to make this as acoustically isolated as we can possibly get it within the realms of practicality hopefully it'll all work. For now folks, as per usual, look after one another, be nice to each other, and we shall see you next time. Tatty bye!